everyone and welcome to the reading session. Um, today we are going to be continuing with the job hunt that you've read with Tess for the last two weeks and I'm going to be doing the next few chapters. Um, so it's just continuing the same book. Um, if you don't have the book it should be on the Facebook page and just contact one of us if you need the book. So we are going to start with The Florist, so that's the name of the chapter, and it starts on page 70. And um, I'm just going to read through and maybe go through some more difficult words every few pages, just so we're all up to date, all up to speed. And um, yeah, I hope you're all staying safe. So we're just starting with The Florist. Kim led Kurt up the stairs from the subway underground to the street. Kurt was tired from his subway ride, but the sights and sounds of Manhattan woke him up. He sensed the rush of hundreds of cars and trucks. He looked up at the tall buildings. Some of the tallest skyscrapers seemed to stretch up to the clouds. He looked at the throngs of people on the streets. Kim grabbed his hand and led him down the street. Let's go, Kim said. I told the florist I will be there by two. Soon they reached the florist shop. Next page. The shop owner was thin, old and had grey hair. She did not smile. She said, my name is Hester. I own this shop. She had a mean look on her face. Hi, I'm Kim. The ad in the paper says you are hiring a helper. You got that right, said Hester. Have you ever had a job bringing up people and taking their cash? No, but I think I'll be good at it. I'm a good match. I'm a good, I'm good at math, sorry. Have you ever had a job at a florist shop? Hester asked. No, but it sounds like fun. Can you tell Larkspur from Aster? No, but you could teach me. Is your lifelong dream to have a job as a florist? Hester asked. Next page. Well, I don't think so, said Kim. At this point, I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm just trying to find a summer job. Then I will go back to college in the fall. Old Hester sighed. Well, that was the wrong thing to say, she said. I need someone who will stay. You might be bright but I won't hire someone who will leave at the end of summer. OK, thank you for your time, said Kim with a cheerful voice. Later, when they were back outside, Kurt said, that florist was kind of mean. At least I know that's not the right job for me, Kim said. OK, so that's the end of the florist chapter. And I'm just going to go through some difficult words. Um, that we might have picked up on that we don't really understand. So um, Tess might have explained this one earlier in the book, but I'll just pick up on it again just in case. So Subway, it's just basically an American train. So like, do you know how we have the Metro in Newcastle? Um, they have the Subway. So that's what that is. Um, I'm sorry if Tess has already explained it to you, but it's just going through it again, just for pe new people who might have joined us today. Um, a florist. So we're still on the first page of the first of this first chapter. A florist is a person who sells and arranges flowers. So if you're wanting to buy your mother, your girlfriend, your wife, your daughter, your grandma some flowers, you would go. You might go to a florist, and so they have the whole shop. Lots of lots of flowers everywhere. They'll tell them what they want, what kind of flowers, what colour, and they will put them all into a nice bouquet, a nice bunch of flowers for you to give that special person in your life. Um, so that's what a florist is. And then also on the first page of the florist chapter is this word throngs. So it says, he looked at the throngs of people on the streets. Now, throngs 
is it's not a word that you come across too often but it's important to know what it means so throngs means a large densely packed crowd of people so it just means so in this case when Kurt is looking at the throngs of people on the street he's looking at the massive crowds of people on the street so they're all in one area they're all really close together they're all packed together and that's what a throng is just lots of people um, in the same place, very close together. So now we have, so if we go to the next page, so the florist shop owner asks, can you tell Larkspur from Asta? And I didn't, even, I didn't know what this, these words were, so I had to look them up, and, but they're just flowers. So Larkspur and Aster are just types of flowers. Um, I, don't, I don't think they must be very common flowers. Um, but that's what they are. They're just types of flowers. <laughs> so I wouldn't worry too much about that one. And fall. So um, in the next page, it says, so Kim says, then I will go back to college in the fall. Um, a lot of you might know this already, so fall is just the American version of autumn. So we say spring, summer, autumn, winter. They say spring, summer, fall, winter. So it's just one of the seasons of the year that they say slightly differently. But it's the same time of year, same everything, just a different name. So that's, that's the florist um, chapter. And now we'll move on to the bakery chapter, which starts on page 76. Yeah. Kurt followed Kim as they made their way down the street, checking in all the shops. Then he saw something way up high. Look at him, Kurt said, pointing up at a store. There was a window cleaner high up on the side. And he sat on a platform. The platform was hanging by long ropes. He clearly has no fear of high places, said Kim. That is not the job for me. I think it would be fun, said Kurt. Think of all the stuff you could see from way up there. I would rather see the sights from inside the store, Kim said. Let's keep going, it's getting late. Suddenly, Kurt smelled something that made his tummy thunder. The smell of freshly baked goods filled the air. We must go in there, Kurt said. It was a bakery. The baked goods were displayed in a big glass case. There were cakes and cupcakes. There were rolls and muffins. There were sticky buns and other yummy treats. Kim asked if they had a job opening. Maybe, said the baker. The boss is out. Fill out these forms. She will call you later if she has a job. This place is making me hungry, Kurt said. Here, you can have this muffin, said the baker. It's a day old, but it's perfectly fine. It's a cranberry muffin. Next page. Kurt bit into the muffin. It's so tasty, he said. It's tart, but also sweet. What's in it? All muffins start out with the same basic recipe, the man said. You need flour, eggs, cream and butter. The tart taste is from the cranberry. That's all I can tell you. The rest of the recipe is secret. Why is it secret? Kurt asked. If I told people how to make muffins like this one, then they would not need to come here to get one. As I left the bakery, Kurt whispered to Kim, if you get a job here, maybe they'll teach you the secret recipe. Then we can open up our own bakery. So you are going to be a baker now, Kim said with a smile. You are quite a dreamer, Kurt. And that's the end of the bakery chapter. So again, just going through some words that you might have picked up on that you might not understand straight away. So the first one that I found was platform. And this is actually, oh yeah, it's on the first page. So it's on the first page of the bakery chapter. 
And so the platform in this um, context is a raised surface on which people or things stand. And it, it might be easier to show you based on the picture. So um, the picture in this book is this one here. And I'll just zoom in to the man who's at the side of the building. And this here that he sat on is the platform. So it's a raised surface that he's sitting on. Just so he's not dangling, it's just so he has some support. So the thing that he sat on there is the platform. So the raised surface on which people or things stand, in this case, the man um, um, being raised up on that platform. So we're looking at the next page now on of the bakery chapter and it says, it's the first line, suddenly Kurt smelled something that made his tummy thunder. This isn't um, a common context that thunder is used in, so I thought I would just explain what it means um, in this scenario. So normally when we think of thunder, we think of thunder and lightning, you know, a storm, um, loud noises coming from the sky. But in this case, it's his tummy that's thundering, which isn't exactly the same thing. So this just means his tummy's rumbling because he's hungry. So if you're hungry and you get like the noise coming from your tummy, it's rumbling. In this case, it's thundering. So it's, it means the same thing. It just means he's hungry. Um, and I just thought I would just put in what a bakery is. A bakery is just a place that bread and cakes are made and sold. Um, you know, Greg's is a bakery. They, you know, make and sell cakes, bread, pastries, that kind of thing. So that's a bakery. And then when it's we're on, so we're still on this the same page of this chapter, um, the baker says after Kurt says he's hungry, um, here you can have this muffin, said the baker. It's a day old, but it's perfectly fine. It's a cranberry muffin. A cranberry, it's not a very common fruit, um, like a berry, but it's probably important to know what it means. So a cranberry is just a small red berry. Um, so yeah, there's just small red berries in this muffin here. And a muffin, it's just a type of cake. Um, yeah, so it's like, it's all like a big cupcake, <laughs> very raised, a big cupcake. And then if we move on to the next page of the bakery chapter, um, Kurt bit into the muffin and he said, it's so tasty. It's tart, but also sweet. So in this scenario, tart means bitter, sour. Um, tart can also be a type of food like a, a type of um pastry based food but in this circumstance it means sour bitter and that is coming from the cranberries so the man later says the tart taste is from the cranberry and so the cranberry is what's making it sour it's making it bitter it's making it go Ooh. okay and then they say um, about there being a secret recipe. So he's in the same, on the same page, it says, that's all I can tell you, the rest of the recipe is secret. So the, a recipe is a set of instructions for preparing a particular food. So it'll be how much of one thing is added, how much of another thing is added, and then what to do with them. So in this case, it might be 200 grams of flour, um, five cranberries and a cup of sugar. That's the ingredients you need, part of the recipe. And the method might be that you stir all them together, put in the oven for 20 minutes. Um, so that would be the recipe. But in this um, scenario, it's secret. So this, this the word secret means that it's not, it's not known by other people and it's not seen by other people. 
So it's just the people that work at the bakery that know how to make these muffins using this secret recipe. So every, the people that come in and buy the muffins, they don't know what's, they don't know exactly how to make them. And that's all I could find. That's the only tricky words I could find in that chapter. So we could move on. Now this chapter is called Keeping It Up. And it all starts on page 82 as well. Where to next? asked Kurt. Let's just go and see what we find, Kim said. They passed a place called Jack's Auto Shop. It was a loud place. There were men banging and drilling. One man in the auto shop was lying under a car. One man was looking under the hood of a cab. Do you think you can get a job in there? asked Kurt. No way, Kim said. I can't fix cars. I think it looks like my kind of job, said Kurt. You get used to you get to use lots of cool tools and you get to mess up your clothes with grease. That's perfect. As they went on, they passed lots of carts selling food. One of the cart men was selling roasted peanuts. Kurt caught a whiff of the spicy peanuts and started tugging on Kim's blouse. Those nuts smell so good, he said. Can I have some? Kurt, Kim exclaimed. You just had a cranberry muffin from the bakery. But I need a snack for energy. Fine, Kim said. She got Kurt some peanuts. Kim went into a music shop. The music in the shop was so loud she had to scream. Do you have a job opening? The boss yelled no. Kim tried a clothing shop. There were no jobs. She spoke to the owner of a bookstore. He was not hiring. She went into a shop that sold baby clothing. We can't help you, said the ladies at the desk. Good luck. Next page. After a bit, Kim and Kurt came to a candy shop. That's the place to get a job, Kurt said cheerfully. If I can't get a job, I can at least get a cavity, said Kim. She went in and got some sweets for herself and Kurt. Then she and Kurt flopped down on a bench. Kim was hot and tired. She was starting to think she might never find a job. She sighed and set her chin on her hand. Don't be so gloomy, Kurt said. You know what mom says, a quit never wins and a winner never quits. Kim smiled. You are right, Kurt. Thanks for saying that, she said. I'll keep trying. And so that's the um, end of the Keeping It Up chapter. So, again, that started on page 82. And some difficult words that I noticed from this chapter, there were quite a few actually. So when they are talking about going past the auto shop, so in this case, the auto shop is basically a car shop. Um, so maybe a garage, so they will, um, you, if your car's broken, you'll take it in, they'll see what's wrong with it, they'll fix it for you if they can. Um, so banging, in this case, so it says it was loud, it was a loud place. So, um, and there were, my, there were men banging and drilling. So banging, that's making a loud noise drilling so with the drilling they are physically using a drill so it's a type of tool and um it's very noisy and it's um it's a tool that makes holes in things so they might have needed a drill to produce a hole in a part of the car and that's where all the noise was coming from so lots of noise banging and drilling so a drill is a tool. And then on the same first page, grease. So Kurt said, you get to use lots of cool tools and you get to mess up your clothing with grease. That's perfect. So grease is um, a thick, oily substance. So 
if you can just picture maybe oil that you used to cook you know if you put some oil in a pan it's kind of like that but maybe a bit thicker and it's it's used a lot in cars so if you need an oil change or something in your car um they get covered a lot in grease if you need to be underneath the car to check um the underneath of the car again covered in a lot of dirt grease a lot of this oily substance And then at the bottom of this first page in the Keeping It Up chapter, we've got the word tugging. So it says, Kurt caught a whiff of the spicy peanuts and started tugging on Kim's blouse. <coughs> Excuse me. Tugging means pulling. So with him being a lot smaller than Kim, he was probably tugging like this, like grabbing her blouse, tugging, tugging at the blouse, pulling at it to get her attention. So um, he wanted the peanuts that bad. He was like, Kim, come on, let's get peanuts. Tugging at her blouse, like, come on. So tugging just means pulling. And then after Kim has said no to Kurt being able to um, get some peanuts, he says that he needs a snack for energy and this is on the next page. So he needs a, but I need a snack for energy and energy in this context means like the strength, you need strength to do things, to stay awake. So if he didn't have a lot of energy, he might feel tired, lethargic, he might, he might just want to stay in bed all day. But if he's energetic, he might be hyper and raring to go and excited to do things. Um, and he's saying that he needs a snack for energy because you get your energy from food. Um, a lot of a lot of what you eat has a lot of energy in it. So that's what he's saying. So if you eat the food, you become more energized. So that's what that means in that context. And then when they are talking about, we're, we're in the next page now, so page 86. After a bit, Kim and Kurt came to a candy shop. So, um, a candy shop, we say sweets, the Americans say candy. It's the same thing. It's just sweets, candy, same thing. So, if I, and then she says, if I can't get a job, at least I can get a cavity. And this is talking about the sweet shop, the candy shop. Um, so if you eat a lot of sweet things, a lot of sugary things, you end up getting, you, well, if you don't brush or something, brush your teeth, you might get a cavity or tooth decay. So and decay means that your teeth are rotting. So if you see blackness in your teeth, that's usually the decay um, from the sugar affecting your teeth so much. So she's joking, saying if I can't get a job, I can at least get a cavity because she'll be eating that many sweets um, that she'll rot her teeth and, you know, she might have to get them fixed later. So it's just a joke. And then um, the same paragraph, actually, it says, at the end of this paragraph, it says, then she and Kurt flopped down on a bench. Flopped. Um, so it kind of means like they sat down heavily, like, oh. <laughs> so that means that they were just so tired, they had to just flop and be really heavy for a minute because they were just so tired. They'd been looking for jobs for a long time with no success and I think they were just very, very tired. Um, so that's what that means. And then in the, on the same page, page 86, we've got the word gloomy. So Kurt says, don't be so gloomy. You know what mom says, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. So don't be so gloomy. It's um, a word that could be used 
often enough. Um, so don't be so gloomy. It means don't be so sad. Don't be so depressed. Don't look so down. Um, he's trying to cheer her up because she's so, she's so upset that she hasn't managed to find a job yet. So he's trying to cheer her up. He's trying to um, make her feel happy. Um, and then he says, you know what mum says, a quitter never wins and a winner never quits. So in this, so a quitter means that you stop doing something. So if you quit something, you stop something. So in this circumstance, it might mean that Kim is considering stopping looking for jobs or quitting looking for jobs. And what Kurt is saying is that if you quit, you can't win because you're not trying. You're not trying to get there. And a winner never quits. It just means the same thing. If you've won, it means you haven't quit. So it's a nice thing to go by. Just keep trying, trying and trying again. And I think that's the end of the difficult words in the Keeping It Up chapter. So we can move on to the grocery chapter. And the grocery chapter starts on page 88. Okay. Not far from the shops Kim had just visited, Kurt spotted a big grocery store. Look, Kurt exclaimed. There is a poster on the window, Kim. It says job opening. Kim went inside and asked to speak to the boss. Hi, I'm Kim and this is Kurt. We saw your job opening ad in the window. Nice to meet you, said the grocer. My name is Mr. Fremont. I own the grocery store. Mr. Fremont was a large, jolly looking man. Kim liked the look of him. She had a feeling he would be a kind boss. Have you ever had a job? asked Miss Fremont. No, said Kim, but I can sweep and I can mop. I can help unpack boxes. I'm good at math, so I can help with the cash register. Just show me what to do. Move on to the next page, page 90. Mr. Fremont smiled. Well, Jeannie is here. Sorry. Well, Jeannie here is helping me take inventory at the moment, he said. What sort of food is inventory? asked Kurt. Is it yummy? Mr. Fremont was going to reply, but Kim cut in. Inventory is not a food, you silly goof. Inventory means they are counting all the goods in the shop. They need to know precisely how many of each item they have. Then they will know how many they need to order. It sounds like you know a lot about how to run a grocery store, said Mr. Fremont. I know some, Kim said cheerfully. You can teach me the rest quickly. I'm good with details and problem solving. Next page, page 92. Well, Miss Kim, said Mr. Fremont, I have taken a liking to you. You seem bright, but would you mind if I gave you one or two tests to see what you can do? No problem, Kim said. I would like a job too, Kurt said, and I would like to hire you, said Mr. Fremont, but I can't. You are a child and the law says I can't hire children. Too bad, said Kurt. I'm a good counter too. I'll tell you what, Mr. Fremont said. I have a small task for your sister. You watch her and let me know if she makes a mistake, OK? OK, said Kurt. And that brings us to the end of the grocery chapter, starting page 88. So, in the first paragraph of this chapter, still on page 88, it says, Kurt spotted a big grocery store. So Kurt spotted a big grocery store. That just means he noticed, he saw um, a big grocery store. So if you spot something, you see it, you notice it straight away, 
And that's what he did. He, he saw this grocery store for his sister. And then we have the words cash register. And that is right at the bottom of page 88, the last line. It says, so Kim says, I am good at math, so I can help with the cash register. Just show me what to do. So cash register. It's a machine used in shops that has a draw for money and records the amount of each sale. So if you've been to a shop, um, you scan the cashier person, the person that is working at the shop, will scan the item and it'll come up how how much that item is. And then the more, all the items you're scanning through, it will add up the total. And then and it'll take off any discounts that you might have. If you buy and get one free, it'll take off that at the end. And so it'll give you the total for the sale. Then you give the money over. That's the amount for that sale. And then um, they will put the money in the draw in the cash register. So and the, all the money will be kept separately. So the £20 notes, the £10 notes, the £5 notes, all the different types of coins will be kept separately in the cash register. And they might even have some receipts there, that kind of thing in the draw. And within the cash register, it records the amount of each sale. So if the person before you spent £5, if if you spend five pounds and the person after you spent ten pound, um, it would come up so far that the three the, between the three of you you'd spend twenty pound. So that's what it does. It just stores. It's a place to store all the money, any receipts maybe, um, and it records the running total and the total from each sale within the um the machine. And it just makes it easier for the people who are counting the money at the end just to make sure that. The, the right amount has been taken for the amount of items that have been sold. So it just makes it easier for the shopkeeper or the owner of the grocery store in this case. So I hope that made sense. OK, and um, I just noticed this word as I was reading the so it says well, actually, I'll do inventory first. I'll tell you what an inventory is first. So it's a complete list of items or like in this case, it's like a, the quantity of the items that are held in stock. And it does actually explain it further on what it is. So inventory. So this is on page 90. Inventory means they are counting all the goods in the shop. They need to know precisely how many of each item they have then they will know how many they need to order. So that explains inventory really well. It's just, it might be, we have 10 milk, five bread, two cans of beans, but we have no cereal. And that you, then you need to know, okay, we probably need to order some, some cereal. We have none left. And then you order however many you think you need based on how many you're selling. So if you have a low quantity of something, you need to order more. So that's a really good explanation of what an inventory is. Um, so that's that one. And then in the big chat, in the big paragraph on page 90, Mr. Fremont was going to reply, but Kim cut in. Inventory is not a food, you silly goof. So a goof, I think is just, it's a playful insult in a way. So if you call someone um, a fool or something like that, you know, it, it's just um, Kim being playful with her younger brother, calling him silly. It's just another way to say he's silly um, because he thought that food was an inventory and it's not. Um, so it's just kind of a silly, funny way to say inventory is not a food. How silly like that. OK. And then. We are on the last page of this chapter, so page 92, please. 
And I think the difficult word on here may be mistake, and that's towards the bottom. So it says, I'll tell you what, Mr. Fremont said, I have a small task for your sister. You watch her and let me know if she makes a mistake. Okay? Okay, said Kurt. So a mistake is when you do something wrong, you do something inaccurate. So she might, in this case, um, Kim accidentally might put in the inventory, for example, oh, that they have five loaves of bread instead of six. That would be a mistake because she got it wrong. And then it would be Kurt's job to be like, to say to her, Kim, that's not right. Here's the right answer. So that, that's all the difficult words in those four chapters. Um, so we've read four chapters today. I think that's quite a lot. I think we've done quite well today. Um, but I do have some questions for you to be thinking about at home. Just to um, maybe test yourself a little bit more. So I'll just ask them, give you um, a few seconds, maybe a minute to think about the answers. Uh, maybe write it down. Maybe you can more than more than happy for you to flick through the book, find the find the answer. It's not a test of memory, don't worry. Um, and and just see if you know the answer. If you don't, that's fine as well. Okay, so this is from the first chapter that we've read today. It's called the florist. So the question is, what was the florist like? What was the florist like? I'll give you a few seconds to answer that, to have a flick through, see what you can find. I'm flicking through as well. Give you a few more seconds to find that. What was the florist like? So maybe like, it could be her physical appearance, it could be her personality, it could be the way she presented herself to Kim and Kurt. Whatever you interpret that question to be, there's no wrong answers really. bit longer to find the answer to this one. Okay, so what was the florist like? I'm on page 72 here to, to answer this question. The very top of page 72 so the, the shop owner was thin, old and had grey hair. She did not smile. And then in the next um, little paragraph, at the end of it, she said she had a, a mean look on her face. So that's the, they're the answers I've written down. So thin, old, grey hair, she didn't smile and mean. Maybe she had a mean look on her face. And actually later on, um, Kurt says, it's, so it's at the, at the end of the florist chapter, page 74. He says, that florist was kind of mean. So that's how she's coming across. So she's coming across thin, old, grey hair. She didn't smile and she was mean. Okay. And so the next question I have for you all is, so it's the same chapter, the florist chapter. Why didn't she give Kim a job? Have a flick through, see what you can find. Same chapter, the florist. See what you can find. Why didn't she give Kim a job? Why didn't the florist give Kim a job in the florist shop? 
I'll give you a clue, it's towards the end of the florist chapter. Bit longer on this one. Okay, so let's go through this question. So why didn't she give Kim a job? Why didn't the florist give Kim a job? Well, so it's the very last um, page in the florist chapter. Um, Kim tells the florist that she only wants a summer job. So at the top she says, at the top of page 74. At this point, I don't know what I want to do for the rest of my life. I'm just trying to find a summer job. Then I will go back to college in the fall. And then old Hester sighed. Well, that was the wrong thing to say, she said. I need someone who will stay. You might be bright, but I won't hire someone who will leave at the end of summer. So the answer is, is because she only wanted a summer job. Um, the florist a woman so old Hester only wanted so Hester wanted someone who was going to be in it for the long haul someone who was going to be dedicated to her florist shop not just there for a couple of months so um and that's what Kim was looking for just a summer job but that didn't suit Hester so well done if you got that one okay and the next question I have for you is in the bakery chapter which starts on page 76 so, name things, any number of things you can, there were in the bakery. So, name things that there were in the bakery. Um, I'm talking about edible things, the things that the bakery sold. I'll give you a, a bit longer to try and find this one. So this is the bakery chapter. Name things that there were in the bakery. So name the things that the bakery was selling that um, Kurt and Kim could see when they went in. Let's go through this one then. So this is the answer is on page 78. So there were so sort of halfway about so maybe the third paragraph, um, page 78. It was a bakery. The baked goods were displayed in a big glass case. There were cakes and cupcakes, there were rolls and muffins, there were sticky buns and other yummy treats. So any of those were a perfect answer. If you thought of something that bakeries sell um, is your answer, well done as well. You know, if you maybe put some pasty sausage rolls, if you thought of what maybe Greg sell, well done as well. So cakes, cupcakes, rolls, muffins, sticky buns, other yummy treats, all acceptable answers, well done. So this question is still from the bakery chapter. What did Kurt eat from the bakery? What did he eat? I'll give you a bit of time to find this one. So it's still the bakery chapter. So he says he's hungry and the the man working in the bakery offers him something to eat. What is it? What does he offer him to eat? So 
So what did Kurt eat from the bakery? Okay, so the answer is a cranberry muffin. So at the bottom of page 78, um, Kurt says, this place is making me hungry. Here, you can have this muffin, said the baker. It's a day old, but it's perfectly fine. It's a cranberry muffin. So a cranberry muffin is the answer. Um, and if you remember, Kurt goes on to say that it's tart, but sweet. Um, and so cranberry, and cranberry muffin is the right answer in this case. Well done to all of those who got it. Okay, so keeping it up chapter now. So that starts on page 82. That's what this next question is going to be on. In the keeping it up chapter, which other jobs did Kim consider? This is a difficult question. Um, there are many, many possible answers here. Um, so chances are you've got it right. Um, so what, what other jobs did Kim consider in the keeping it up chapter? And again, it starts on page 82. Have a look to see what you can find. Have a flick through. I'll give you um, a bit longer on this one because it's there are quite a lot of answers that it could be. In the Keeping It Up chapter, which other jobs did Kim consider? Bit longer on this one, bit longer. Okay, so let's answer this one. In the Keeping It Up chapter, which other jobs did Kim consider? So, on page 82, so that's the start of the chapter, um, there was an auto shop called Jack's Auto Shop. Um, so that could have been an answer. And then on page um 84 there was a music shop and she had to go in and start screaming because the music was so loud um so music shop then clothing shop so same page 84 clothing shop and the next one is bookstore so same page 84 and baby clothes store that is at the bottom of page 84 and then at the top of page 86, we have a candy shop. So that is one, two, three, four, five, six possible answers there. Well done to anyone who got them all. That's really impressive. Well done. Um, and well done for getting any of them, actually, because it wasn't an easy question. So just to run through the answers again. Um, an auto car shop. It's an auto shop, a car shop, a garage, however you wanted to write it. A music shop a clothing shop, a bookstore, a baby clothing store and a candy shop. So well done to everyone. And then this next question is from the grocery chapter. So this starts on page 88. And the question is, why couldn't Mr. Fremont in the grocery store hire Kurt? Why couldn't Mr. Fremont in the grocery store hire Kurt? I'll give you some time to flick through and find the answer to this one. Why couldn't Mr. Fremont in the grocery store hire Kurt? Click through, try and find the answer. Give you a bit of a clue, it's towards the end of the grocery chapter. Uh, 
Have you all found it? So it's towards the end of the grocery chapter, page 92, to narrow it down. Okay, shall we go through the answer? Why couldn't Mr. Fremont in the grocery store hire Kurt? And the answer is in the middle of page 92. So it says, so Kurt says, I would like a job too. And, and, and Mr. Fremont says, and I would like to hire you, but I can't. You are a child and the law says I can't hire children. So there is your answer. He was too young. So Kurt was too young to hire. He was still only a child. And the law says that you can't hire um, people below a certain age. So in this country, it's 16. So I'm not sure what it is in America. It might be the same. Um, so you can't hire children. Um, they have to be above a certain age. So that's why Mr. Fremont couldn't hire Kurt. So that's, that's all of the questions. That's the four chapters done for today. We will finish the book next week. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll probably finish it next week, actually, this book. So the job hunt book, we'll probably finish it. And um, thank you all so much for tuning in and listening to this lesson. Um, I hope you're all staying home, staying safe. Um, I'm sorry we can't do this live. There have been some technical issues the last couple of weeks, um, which is a real shame because we loved having all your comments coming through. So we're really sorry about that. So this is the next best thing. Well done for today. Well done for your answers. Um, and thank you so much for joining me. Um, stay safe and have a lovely week.